In southern Africa, there still remains uh, a true group of hunter-gatherers. Anthropologists have studied them because they serve as a time capsule for us to learn about our past. However, I believe we can learn about our future. As an educator, they are an amazing group of people. They believe that education is something that is changing every generation. They believe that knowledge is not something that is just set. It is something that requires learning tools. Um, young children are just simply given the learning tools to explore their environments. They probe their environments and they create new understandings every new generation. I happen to be born in the same country. Um, I have a very different perspective. It's a beautiful country. It's called Namibia. I was born one year after it became a country. Um, unfortunately, it also has a very sad past. It was once a colony of Germany and once a colony of Britain. As a result, it is one of the most unequal countries today. It is not only unequal in terms of access to wealth, but education. My parents, uh, they were fortunately able to afford a good education for me, which was not the case for the vast majority of the country. I went to a school where I had American friends, American teachers, friends from Egypt, friends from all around the world, and it shaped who I am today. Um, I appreciate the global mindset that I have, and it has made me a better person. My first inspiration to be an educator was my mother. She felt inspired in this new country called Namibia. She wanted to spread literacy, but she did not want to spread it in the old languages of just English and German. She wanted her books to be translated into indigenous languages. And that was for the first time. That was our tree. She based her stories on our true family experience. My mother was also an amputee, and in fact, the, the lady who worked with her to do the illustrations was also an amputee. And part of my mother's dream, as well as spreading literacy, she wanted to donate um, medical help to children who are in rural areas who might have not been able to access um, health if they needed, uh, if they were also amputees. Um, I had a pet meerkat growing up in Namibia, and my mother wrote books all about our childhood. Um, she wrote her books in English, but they were translated. And she, she believed it was so important that uh, these Namibian children could access their own language. Unfortunately, um, due to lack of funding, many schools were donated books, but the books were soon lost because libraries didn't have the resources to contain them for very long. I moved to South Africa, where I went to university, and this was my first experience as a teacher. I got the opportunity to teach refugees, and I met the most amazing lady. She was named Ruth. She had come from Equatorial Guinea. She had traveled through six African countries with her children just to try and get a better life for her children. I found out that she was learning English as her fifth language, and I very soon realized that Education was not about a teacher transferring knowledge to a learner, but teachers and learners creating knowledge together. Amazingly, a few years later, I bumped into the same lady, Ruth. She explained that she continued learning English on her smartphone. And this is when I realized the power of technology and education. She started her own tour guide business to both Spanish tourists as well as English tourists. She got access to funding, through the form of loan sharks, unfortunately, because she didn't have access to a bank because it was so expensive for her to go to a bank. I was a teacher in China, where I still am, but when the COVID pandemic started, I was in South Africa, and I was able to teach my very talented Chinese students from my bedroom in South Africa, and I could go to the beach in South Africa, drink South African beer, right after teaching my Chinese students. And I realized, wow, this is like magic. Um, it also made me realize we could do it the other way around. We could have Chinese teachers teaching uh, South African and Namibian children too. A sad reality is something called learning poverty. 
learning poverty means that 90% of sub-Saharan uh, children, sub-Saharan African children, do not have the ability to read uh, at their age level. This is a sad reality, and it holds so many people back. In Uganda, uh, schools were closed for more than two years because of the pandemic, but many children continued to learn through the form of smartphones. And this was an amazing thing that wouldn't have existed if the pandemic had happened earlier. In Bangladesh, another developing country, the government, uh, in partnership with some companies, they had an initiative where they spread um, Wi-Fi buses around the communities. And the idea was to try and get uh, young women in particular to be able to have access to technology, have access to new knowledge, new skills, and ultimately become entrepreneurs. In many developing countries, farmers are uneducated. Many, are, unfortunately, are still illiterate. But thanks to the power of smartphones, many of these farmers now can get access to information in the form of videos or audio texts, and they can even take photos of their soil and get live feedback in terms of the, the health of their soil and maybe some new techniques to be more productive. Going back to Ruth, she explained that when she was starting her business, it was extremely hard for her to get funding. She had to go to local loan sharks where she was charged very high interest rates. But eventually, she got access to mobile banking where she could get a loan just like everybody else in the country and she was able to be protected by the laws and regulations available to privileged citizens. Moving a few years forward, my mother had forgotten about her books. Um, unfortunately, many of her books did not last in the schools until a German university called her and said, one of, you are one of five Namibian authors whose books have been selected to be brought back to life through augmented reality. They would take the essence of the story and add um, aspects to it to bring it to life. The amazing thing about this was that it could have instant translation, meaning anyone around the world could have instant access to her books and understand our family's perspective of this country. I believe the future could be Namibian writers from all perspectives, all walks of life, also sharing their stories in the form of augmented reality. Going back to our hunter-gatherers, um, we merely have to give the learning tools. If we give learning tools like we did to Ruth, along with technology, and fuse them together, we can have a very exciting future. We can build human capital, we can raise the living standards of the world, and I think we can all benefit from this new future. Thank you.